You're listening to the 40 Thrive Podcast, the show created for women 40 and beyond, ready to shake things up. And now, your host, Jackie McDougall. Hey, welcome back to another episode of 40 Thrive. I know you have plenty of things to do, and so I just appreciate your being here with me. So by now, you know that while I am pretty logical at times, I also love woo-woo and learning and stretching and growing in ways that maybe are a little bit foreign to us. And so there are a lot of concepts, a lot of these like personality tests and things out there that I'm just totally into. As you know, back in May, I did an episode of uh, 40 Thrive where we talked to a strengths finder coach and she really taught us some amazing things about ourselves. Um, And I just wanted to dive even deeper this season. And so today we're going to talk about human design. It sounds a little weird. It sounds a little out there like, uh, you know, we're going to turn into the bionic woman over here. But it's a concept that I had heard many, many times and was not really all that familiar. So back in May, I recorded an episode with Kelsey Abbott, who is a human design coach. And she has a podcast called Find Your Awesome. It's a really good podcast if you want to check it out. But I found Kelsey because she was commenting in a group I'm in and she was talking about human design. And I wanted to know what the heck it is, why it matters. And so we recorded this episode and she just dives in and tells us all about it. In the meantime, I knew I was going back to that episode that I had recorded months ago and I was finally going to share it here with you. And I reached out to her and I was like, hey, do you think you could give me a human design reading? And she did. And holy crap balls, it is so crazy good. Oh my gosh, I have to tell you that there are things about myself that I thought were flaws all this time. And I've sort of tried to hide or fix or, you know, insert verb here. But she showed me my human design chart and sort of did a reading of it. Because seriously, if you get your human design chart and you don't have someone read it, it's very confusing. It's like you're reading alien. But she broke it down for me and she shared some things and it really resonated with me and it was super powerful. So powerful that even my husband, who is the most logical of the logicals, he was like, yeah, I'm in, I want to try this. And he did it and he loved it too. And so if you're in a place and you're like, I think I know what my strengths are. I think I know what I'm made of. I think I know who I am. Then that's great. But we could always know a little bit more. So open your heart, open your mind, and check out this conversation with Kelsey Abbott. Real quick before we go in, make sure you're over in the free and private Facebook group, 40 Thrive Community, right now. There are so many exciting things happening this fall. Oh my gosh, I am showing up and I am seriously here to serve you and to bring in all the experts and all the goodness and my own experience to help you thrive more than you could imagine. So please head on over there and join us. Make sure you comment when you get there and say, I found you on the podcast and I'm here in the group so we can all say hi. Okay, so here's my episode with Kelsey Abbott. Kelsey, welcome. I'm so excited to be here, Jackie. Thank you so much. I'm excited to have you. I've been fascinated with human design and I was tempted to jump in and like research everything I possibly could. And then I was like, well, no, I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna come from it just like a listener and with absolutely no idea. But before we get started, so we were talking a little bit, getting to know each other, and you said something interesting to me. You don't believe in age. What does that mean? It means that the phrase age is just a number is, that's really trite. I just don't believe that a certain age means anything. Hmm. Good or bad? No. No. It means nothing. I used to, when we lived in Maine, I coached this women's triathlon group and they were all ages, but the vast majority I'd say was 50 plus. Mm -hmm. And so many of them would try to say things to be like, oh, I can't do that. I'm too old. I would just call them out on that. (laughs) No, you can do this. I know people older than you that do this. Right. They'd always try to be the only old quote unquote, old person doing this. And I was like, no, there's a whole age group of you people. Right. There wouldn't be, I guess, the age group in the race if they didn't exist, right? Exactly. (laughs) Yeah, I hear what you're saying. And I also, I don't know, I think I come at it as 
being over 40 is like this permission. Now, it doesn't mean that people under 40 don't have permission to do all the things. But I think that when we hit over 40, we've lived a lot of life, we've given a lot to other people, whether you have children or not, we're sort of taught and, you know, bred to be givers, that it's that time where we're like, okay, I'm going to still give, but I'm going to give more to me. Was that lightning? Yeah. That's amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. Being in California, I hardly ever see lightning storms. So I love it. You in Florida. <laughs> and then it'll be sunny in 10 minutes, right? Yeah, probably. Amazing. So I just love talking about age and like what it means to different people. Because in the community, there are plenty of people who believe exactly what you do. Where it's like, why are you even pointing out that we're over 40? We're just doing the thing. Well, and I don't feel like I'm over 40 at all. And... Also, I know people who are over 40, well over 40, who haven't yet given themselves the permission, who Mm. haven't yet been able to soften into the net that allows them to be themselves. That's a bummer because this is the time. It is. And I think that's what helped form the opinion for me at a really young age, that age, it doesn't matter. Well, it's time to do all the things no matter... If you're listening and you're 30 or you're 50 or you're 90, do it. Just do it. Anyway, so let's talk about human design. I'm going to start with the obvious question. What the hell is human design? It's a really wacky term, isn't it? When I first heard it, I was so skeptical. (laughs) Yeah, it sounds like, oh, God, what was that show in the 80s? Like the bionic woman and (laughs) like... Yeah, yeah, six million dollar man. <laughs> um, it like a whole lot of stuff came up for me when I first heard the term, and then now it just rolls off my tongue. But here's what it is. It, okay, and describing it makes it feel even wackier. You have to experience it. But here's the description: it is a combination of astrology, the chakras, the Kabbalah tree of life, and it combines all of these things. It also uses some science, like there are 64 gates in human design, like 64 codons of DNA. It combines everything to make a really clear picture of who you are. Now, here's how I explain it. Years ago, long before you were born, your little baby soul got called down to Earth School. And it got so excited because Earth School is the big time. And so (laughs) as part of preparing for Earth School, it got to check all these boxes, like how it wants to experience life in our school, like who it's going to be and what it's here to do. And so it checks all the boxes. And then once it's figured all that out, it decides the exact time and place and date where you will be born in order to ensure all of that stuff happens. And what comes out of it is this totally wacky looking chart that is the blueprint for your soul. And so by reading your chart, by understanding your human design, you have this blueprint, this like ultimate permission slip to fall back on to really, truly be you and to live life with ease. So we have this really messed up idea that life is supposed to be a struggle, that you have to earn things. In order to have them and be them. And uh uh-uh, human design and following our design shows us it can be all joy. It can all be filled with ease. And that's actually how it's supposed to be. We're actually supposed to be in flow all the time. So every single time we get on the struggle bus, we are not living our design. And that is a reminder for us to be like, whoops, wrong road. What kind of messages do you think we got growing up? Because that's where it all starts, that we feel we do need to struggle. I mean, you've seen it, I'm sure, at parties where it's like, oh, this has happened to me. Well, this has happened to me. It's like a badge of honor to have a more difficult life. Yeah, what is up with that? (laughs) (laughs) What is wrong with us? I've also seen it, like, standing in line in the grocery store, people bonding over complaining. And that's Mm. just, like, this totally weird human thing that I don't don't partake in. I'm the weirdo that's like, Look at that beautiful blah, 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 whatever it is. Like, I want to share the beauty in the world. Yeah. So what happens is the day we're born, we know our design. We know exactly why we're here. We know all of our gifts, which are sprinkled like golden nuggets throughout our design. Hmm. And then people start talking to us. (laughs) 
<laughs> right. And at that instant, like from day one, they start shooting on us. And whether it's actually that they're telling us we should be doing certain things or we're just getting that impression, right. we start picking up this idea that we are supposed to play small, that we're supposed to do things a certain way. And that's what we start believing. And when we live that way, then we get to be, if you're really lucky, like 10. If you're lucky, it's in your teens. Like, it's it's amazing no matter what age you are. But when you finally learn what your design is and you learn to and do the work to shed all those shoulds and mm-hmm. just be you, then that's like peace and flow and joy and amazingness. Well, and who doesn't want that? And I just want to point out, it's not in the absence of struggle or difficulties, adversity. It is just really being aligned with who you are and what your design is so you can get through those things a little bit more with a little bit more ease. Yeah, life itself is complicated and tricky and challenging. And there's a whole lot of stuff that's hard. Every day of our life, doesn't have to feel like we're pushing a boulder uphill. It doesn't? No. (laughs) If you feel like you're pushing a boulder uphill, you may want to check in with yourself and do things differently. Right. And I talk to a lot of people all the time, um, many of whom who do feel that way. And so before we get in and, and help them out, because I think it's really important, did you just come out of the womb like human design? I got this. Like... No. How did this happen for you? So my path is actually like totally windy and zigzaggy. And in human design, my energy type is manifesting generator. And that is our path. I started, I actually have my master's degree in marine biology. And I bounced around all over the place. And eventually, like I'm really cutting the story short here. I went to coaching school, uh, became a certified professional coach. And then... A couple of years ago, I have my own podcast, the Find Your Awesome podcast, and I was interviewing mm-hmm. someone on the podcast and she said, are you familiar with human design? And I said, what? <laughs> and after that episode, of course, I started Googling. I looked up my own chart. It made no sense at all. I right. continued Googling slowly and I learned some things. I learned that a manifesting generator was also known as a warrior Buddha. And I was like, oh, oh, that resonates like that resonates with my soul. And then about a month later, I met someone who was like, oh, if you are into human design, then you must follow this person. And I'm like, no, but now I do. And I started (laughs) following it was Jenna Zoe. And I started following all of her work, like all of her work. And then she offered a certification program. And I did that. That was like a year and a half ago. So that has been my path to human design. Wow. And so just having somebody on your podcast, Mm -hmm. (laughs) and this has happened to me, this has happened to my podcast students, this has happened to many of us, in that you have a conversation that just turns on a light in your life. And so I thought you were going to say back when you were 18, or what did your life look like before you got into human design? Was it much different? In some ways, yes and no. Okay, so manifesting generator, like I said, we're here to bounce from thing to thing to thing to thing. I did that. We're here to play. Did that. Like I've always known that. There are a few key things that have changed. I had, so when I became a certified coach in 2015, 14, I think I'm horrible with the year on that. I cannot remember that. So I've worked with a bunch of different business coaches and other coaches, and I've heard a lot of shoulds about you're supposed to be driven by money. Like, go ahead and if you're not making an income, you're not making an impact. And you need to make lots of money and You need to get super specific about the amount of money you want to make and you're super specific about your ideal client. And this language would make me like, it felt like a temper tantrum. Like I felt like there was something inside me lying face down on the floor, pounding my fists and kicking my feet and just being like, no. (laughs) And yet I had no reason to back that up. And Mm -hmm. so eventually it felt like these people were bullying me. So eventually I would say, okay, fine. I'm going to get super specific. I'm going to be driven by money. And this year, I'm going to make this amount of money. 
And I'm going to get specific. I'm going to shout that number out loud. And then guess what I learned about human design? What's that? You can be a specific manifester or a non-specific manifester. If you are a specific manifester, all of that stuff about the specificity is so true for you. You state that number and the universe is like, here, I'm going to give it to you exactly as you wish. If you are a non-specific manifester, all of that stuff blocks your flow. So if you're a non-specific manifester, the way to move through this world is to be free to say, hey, universe, what I want, for instance, is I want to spread information about human design. I want everyone to feel empowered by human design. And then the universe brings me people like you who say, hey, will you come on my podcast? But if I said I want to be on the 40 Thrive podcast, the universe would be like, it'd be like hard screeching of brakes. No, you don't do that. <laughs> Like the universe, for a non-specific manifester, the universe brings us things that we don't even know exist. Mm. Things that better, it's like more than we can even possibly imagine. I think it's fascinating that you say that because I am a big believer in we can only, you know, manifest or set goals or however my listener might actually think of that. But we can only see what we know. And when we only put out there things that we know about, we're limiting ourselves. Yes. And if you're a specific manifester, that's what you do. You make the shopping list and then the universe delivers. So it's still effective. (laughs) Oh, it's very effective. My husband's a specific manifester and about a year ago, our refrigerator broke and it was a holiday, like Memorial Day or Labor Day. I don't remember. And I was like, oh, hey, uh, I'm pretty sure the fridge is broken. Lowe's is having a sale. Let's go check it out. He was not entirely convinced that the fridge was 100% broken. He was like, okay, fine, but I'm only paying X amount. What I don't remember that exact amount, but whatever it was, we paid $1 less. Wow. Yeah. That's yeah. the power of a specific <laughs> manifester. Yeah. And so it's okay to be both a specific and a non-specific manifester. Just, it's just crucial to know which one you are. Hmm. How do you find that out? So if you're looking at your human design chart and let's back up, you can go get a free human design chart a couple places, either Mm jovianarchive.com or mybodygraph.com. It's free. They're both good. You can see the arrows clearer on mybodygraph.com. Don't get bogged down in both of these places offer you tons of information about human design. It's dangerous. Like it's confusing. They use weird words. I highly recommend you don't take yourself down that rabbit hole. That's just a warning. All right. So now you've got your chart and you'll see it's this weird picture of a body. Mm -hmm. And at the top of that body, up by the head, there are four arrows, two on the left and two on the right. On the right, the bottom arrow is the one we're going to look at. Okay. If that arrow points towards the head... In other words, like if it points left, then you're a specific Mm -hmm. manifester. Mm. If it points to the right away from the head, then you're a non-specific manifester. And so it's pretty easy for somebody to find out which one they are. Yeah, just if you're looking at Jovian, zoom all the way in because the way the arrows are, you just have to zoom in and like double, triple check it. Because I don't know, there's something magical about those arrows. I swear they switch directions all the time. I'll definitely link to all of the stuff in the show notes because I want to make sure to provide that. So like many things, you know, it seems like human design is this trend, this thing that people are suddenly talking about. And it's like, ooh, and, and, and I actually sort of mislabeled it under those personality tests and things like that. I'm in this quest to understand myself better and to share tools that will help my audience also understand themselves better. And so I'm introducing these different tools And then they can decide which one works for them. But how long has this existed, human design and all of this? It was downloaded by this guy named Ra Urahu, whose real name was Robert something, um, (laughs) in the 80s. And he was in like eight days of meditation and all of this came through. Again, like the more you learn about the background of human design, the more you're like, what? (laughs) 
Right. Sometimes you learn more about it and you're like, oh, it's legit. And then sometimes yeah. you learn more about it and you're like, this is a little woo woo. Yeah, it's crazy woo woo. And when I first was learning about it, like at the very beginning, I gave away a bunch of free readings. And with every reading, every single person was totally blown away. And that for me was my like big hit of, oh, this is legit. This is really resonating with every single person. And everyone is a different energy type and a different profile and has all these different designs. And every single one of them is feeling that this is 100% true for them. Yeah, there's something to this. So I've had my astrology chart done before. How does it take that and then add to it? Like, what's the difference between that and just an astrology chart? So this has, there are nine energy centers in human design, which are similar to the chakras. So you're either going to have a defined, for instance, root center or an undefined or open. We're just going to use those words interchangeably right now. If it's Mm -hmm. defined, it's going to be colored in. The actual color doesn't matter. Somebody, maybe it was raw, decided what colors things would be. So a colored in root is brown for no apparent reason. So if it's defined, it's colored in. And if Mm -hmm. it's open or undefined, it's white. And then within all of that, we have, they're called gates. And those Mm -hmm. are the golden nuggets. Those are the gifts. And what human design wants us to do is to lean into every single one of those gifts that is, has been like uniquely sprinkled for us. Lean into those gifts. And that's how We are supposed to share our wisdom with the world and how we're supposed to change the world because every single one of us is here to change the world in our own very unique way. I find a lot of women struggling to know exactly. So we want a path. We want like something spelled out for us where it's like, do this, then this, and then look at fitness, look at diet, look at, you know, anything that we do. We're like, just tell me what to do and I'll do it. And so Does this provide a little bit of clarity on what their next steps are? Or is it kind of like, you're great at these things, now figure it out for yourself? Mm, No, there's definitely, I mean, in human design, we can learn what drives you. For instance, I started talking about how I had heard so much about like, make lots of money, be driven by money. You know what? So there is a gate in human design that like, if that box is checked for you, then you are here to be driven by money. And that's because your drive to make lots of money is what's going to get you to where you're supposed to be. There are other things that might drive you. Maybe it's the desire to impact people. Maybe it's a desire to be seen. Those are my two drivers that my soul Mm -hmm. chose for me. My soul didn't choose the driven by money. That doesn't mean that I'm not here to make money or that I can't make money or anything like that. It just means that by leaning into my need to impact people and my desire to be seen and to give to my tribe, that that's, if I follow those, then that will lead to whatever my definition of success is. Right. And some of that will include money. So I like what you're saying, because if somebody's, let's say somebody's human design, they are driven by money. It's not that it's a weakness or a flaw in them. It's actually part of their design. And it's okay. And it's amazing because maybe you're driven by money because by making tons of money, you are going to have the means to travel to this place where you are going to meet this person who is going to absolutely change your life and you're going to build this school together and then you're going to change the lives of hundreds of thousands of people. You know, just because you had this drive for money, we have no idea like what the big picture is right now. Also getting back to your earlier question about does human design give us step-by-step instructions? When it comes to diet, for instance, There's so much magic in there. Like different energy types are supposed to eat differently. For instance, manifestors, if they believe a food is good for them, it will be good for them. If they believe a food is bad for them, it will be bad for them. That is how powerful they are. Manifesting generators are supposed to, we just need a lot of calories. Um, Then there's another part of your digestion profile where, for instance, my digestion profile is taste, which means that I'm okay with eating the same thing every day for like three months and then I want to change and then I'll go into another but like 
I'll change and eat the same thing for three months and then a different version of the same thing for three months. It changes seasonally. And, you know, I have so many friends who are health coaches and dietitians and they say, no, variety, you need constant variety. Turns out my soul actually chose, nah, it's okay. You can eat the same thing for breakfast for like 10 years and I do it. Wow. So that's part of your human design. So now I don't have to mock my husband when he eats, like, he likes to eat the same thing. No, he probably has sa- taste <laughs> digestion as well. Yeah. Some people are like, oh my God, I, I made this lasagna and what am I going to do with it? And I'm like, oh, eat it like for the next week. That's amazing. And people, other people are like, oh, hell no. Right. <laughs> I'm going to have to get rid of this. There's a one night deal. That's so fascinating. So you talk about nutrition and all of that, what general areas can we expect that human design would sort of open or shed light on? Everything. Yeah. We've got the energy type is how we move through the world, mm-hmm. how we play with energy. And that's basically like how we find our flow. Our profile is our personality. Our incarnation cross is the theme of our life. All of the centers, whether they're defined or undefined, that explains, let me give you an example to explain that one. Okay. All right. When you're looking at the human design chart in the head, there's two triangles, one at the top and then one under that. The top one is called the crown. The one under that is called the ajna. If it's defined, I believe it's green. And if it's undefined, it's white. Mine is undefined. So people who have a defined ajna, their mind feels like a library with a an extensive a filing system. And they are here to hone their perspectives and have opinions about things. Mm-hmm. Debate is going to energize them. People with an open ajna, it feels like there's no library in there. There's this vast expanse. <laughs> it's like Montana sky. It's, oh, it feels so good when it's wide open. And for us, we're not here to cling to opinions we're in in that sense we're open minded like we can hold a bunch of different opinions at the same time opinions just flow through us and debate or anything we perceive as debate is totally draining for us mm. so that for instance my husband has a defined ajna i have an open ajna so to be able to be like we start having a conversation i'm like kelsey out like i can't <laughs> this makes me tired or like what you're saying right now, it all, I, I know you're not debating because we've had this conversation so much time. I know you're, what you're doing with your open audience is just like picking something up and looking at it over and over and over again. And that just totally drains me. So that mm. is just another level to have permission to be myself. That's fantastic because I've thought of several relationships where we probably just have a, an extremely different human design and what energizes us and what sucks the life out of us are, are not aligned. So it makes perfect sense. And I think that's where sometimes you have relationships, whether they're romantic or otherwise, that feel like butting heads all the time because what energizes you and drains you is so very different from each other. It's really eye-opening. It's so helpful for relationships. Oh my goodness. Like when I do a partner human design reading, first of all, it's so fun with people who know each other. So I do like romantic partners, business partners, friends, siblings, whatever, two people who know each other. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's so fun because they'll be like, Oh, that's totally you and help the other person see themselves. Right. And then receive being seen by the other person. But then after the session, since they were both there, they can really truly celebrate the other person and be like, Oh, you're going through an emotional wave right now. Okay. What do you need? How can I support you? Or like, oh, look at you. You have a knack for details. Hey, look, I don't have a knack for details. Will you help me, please? Because like this is, I don't have this gift. Will you do this for me? And like be able to know like other people's strengths and things that it's not just like a strengths finder test because I used to use that a little bit with my clients. This is just like whole nother level of strengths and gifts. And like I say, golden nuggets. Well, it's funny that you mentioned Strengths Finder because my last episode right before yours was with a certified Strengths Finder coach. And 
I started to feel a little bit emotional when you were just talking about that because she brought on the same thing too, is like we sometimes see flaws, what we think are flaws in other people or in ourselves, and they're not actually flaws. She was talking about the 34 different, you know, strengths. And when you have something at the bottom, you may not appreciate that in another person. (laughs) And so I love that you, I feel like these conversations happened in a perfect way, in a perfect timing, because this is like diving in deeper exactly to to who you really are. And so I have to ask, though, because many people may have a reading, and I have no idea what it's like to have a reading, but they've had years and years of environmental issues. So people in their lives, maybe marriages, children, you know, so much adversity. And so does that change somebody's human design at all? No, your design is what your soul picked out for you. The conditioning is all the stuff that happened to you after. And mm. so if you if you feel like you're going to... <laughs> this is the best way I can think of to say this. If you feel like you want to do a reading with somebody, but you're going to fight them the whole way, don't do the reading. You're not ready yet. <laughs> and that's okay. Right. But if there's something in you that just feels like it just wants to just relax, just can I... There's some like niggling thing in you that's like I just want to do it this way or I just wish this were it was okay to do it this way you know what maybe it is and maybe that's exactly Mm -hmm. what your soul picked out for you like I kept having Mm. that nagging feeling of like I don't want to be specific (laughs) and then to finally learn I'm not supposed to be specific oh that is epic permission to be me you've got to have a sense of freedom to go with that it's like you see all these round holes and you don't understand why you as a square peg don't fit when everyone else does. And actually, that is one of the things that I describe a manifesting generator as. We don't fit and we are not square pegs. We will not fit in the round hole. We will not fit in any hole. Neither will reflectors. In fact, reflectors are going to rail against all boxes and labels and MGs, manifesting generators, are right there behind them being like, that's right. <laughs> no boxes and labels. Listen to the reflectors. And what other kinds of, um, you know, you you talk about these types of people. What else is there? Can you describe some more? Yeah. So reflectors are here. They embody and reflect our own wisdom back to us. They are. Mm. I really think that the oracles in um, like the Odyssey and the Iliad, I think those people were probably reflectors projectors are here to guide us they're here to they break things down you know any of those really amazing memes not memes they're graphics they're not memes um Mm -hmm. really helpful explanatory graphics you see especially about human design on instagram projectors made those they just break things down simplify it for us and they're here to guide us they're our teachers and they are like birds while the rest of us are scrambling around on the ground they just see things from a different perspective Mm -hmm. generators are here to follow their desire and the universe is like a personal shopper for them constantly putting things in front of them and saying hey do you like this do you like this do you like this and with every single thing a generator gets to say like yes or no and that yes is a full body yes You can feel it. And Mm. if it's not that full body, yes, it's a no. Uh, Manifestors are here to be big, like really big. They're here to just do what they want and to create movements. And because their energy is so big, they've probably been told to tone it down. Mm. They're extra. Yes. (laughs) And their lesson is to learn, yeah. You're extra because you're extra special. Keep being extra. Like be all the extra you can. And then manifesting generators are a hybrid between manifestors and generators. So we've got the personal shoppers, uh, the universe being a personal shopper for us. And we've got a little bit of extra energy. And we're here to play and show people that you don't need to fit in any holes or any boxes. And you can bounce from place to place to place. And you're here to follow the joy. I love it. It's so funny. And I'm sure people will maybe recognize multiple in themselves. 
So is a person just one of those or are they sort of a combination of many? I love that you asked that question because no, we all have a little bit of all of them in us. And that label that gets slapped on, like the fact that I'm a manifesting generator, that's just my like most predominant energy type. Right. But I've got like I've leaned hard into my reflector energy during this quarantine experience. I definitely had oh, yeah. a few days, weeks maybe of. I have so much to say. I have nothing to say. I want to do everything. I don't want to do anything. And that is, that's what it's like to be a reflector. Thank you for admitting that because there's a line between those who are using this time and you should do all the things you haven't had time for. And I tend to be one of those like, oh, I'm going to accomplish these things. But then when you don't, you feel like you're some sort of loser, you know, like, oh, I'm not enough that I didn't accomplish all these things. Like, look at the universe gave me this time with just a home and and I could do all that. But on the flip side, there are people who are feeling the trauma of what's going on in the world and they need a minute to step back and to reflect Mm -hmm. and to feel it and all of that. And so it's okay. The fact that you said that is wonderful because it allows everybody to feel what you feel when you feel it Yeah, and act accordingly. And all of us are feeling the trauma to some extent. We all have, through our open centers in human design, those white shapes in our chart, that's where we feel and amplify other people's energy. So maybe you feel and amplify other people's emotions, and that's got to be intense right now. I feel and amplify other people's mental energy, so their thoughts. Mm -hmm. Uh, Maybe you feel and amplify other people's fear and anxiety and doubt. Like there's no matter who you are, you're picking up other people's energy and the collective energy is intense right now. It's Absolutely. a wacky roller coaster of ups and downs. I have found it an extremely necessary time to on social media when you have all of these connections and then, you know, you see some of them and I go to hide them, you know, because I mm-hmm. think that's like the most humane way. But then I realize I don't even know who this person is or how we got connected. And they bring like there's no... It's not like it's Aunt Mildred who's going to say, you unfriended me at Thanksgiving, you know, yeah. it's it's just uh, so I, I've really and I say this with love, like I have just been unfriending the heck out of Facebook because that energy like you're talking about, I, I'm not here to fight on social media. Like I will be, I will debate like so with the best of them, but I don't think that social media is the place to do that. I used to. But as a 49-year-old woman, I'm not there anymore. And so I love that you're saying that because I think it's really it's it's a really important time to protect our energy. It really is. And to notice, it's like we all have boats. And notice the leaks and plug mm. them up. So anything, whether it's somebody that you're still connected with on social media, that especially the people, like when I looked at my feed, I just had this experience yesterday. I was like, who? are you like I don't even right. recognize that, that name or have any reason why I would have accepted a friend request from you like I know who I don't know anything about you so whether it's an energy like leak like that or for instance it's that you're trying to be specific when you're non-specific or you're trying to act like you have a defined ajna when you don't these are the places it's just leaking energy it's just like spouting hole after hole after hole in our boat and we are allowed to patch those holes and and to be whole. I love that. And not to be paying attention to somebody else's boat that has absolutely yes. no impact on your life. Oh, my God. Yes, please. <laughs> like, that's a totally different species of boat. <laughs> Stay out yeah. of it. Stay in your own boat. Exactly. 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 I cannot agree more. Okay. So we all know that everybody, well, I guess my audience doesn't know, they can reach out to you through your website, which I'm going to link to also. They can listen to your podcast. They can learn more. I love the fact that your podcast wasn't about human design when you started it. I thought, you know, I mean, I've listened to a few episodes and I thought it was all about that was why you started it. So that's more permission for people to start a creative project or something else in their lives and know that it can sort of morph into something else. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Um, You can hear earlier episodes with professional athletes. We've got a little bit of everything on there. Yeah. Yeah. And then I went pretty deep into human design. (laughs) (laughs) Which is fantastic because I think it applies to all the, even though those people that you had on before didn't talk about human design, what you're teaching and discussing 
applies to all of those other people that were on. Absolutely. Yeah. And you are one of those like multi hyphenate, you know, passionate people as far as like marine biology and a personal trainer yeah. and a group fitness instructor and a triathlon, a triathlete and a triathlon coach. Yeah. My goodness. Is there anything that you don't do? Well, I don't actually do a bunch of those things anymore. So I, I'm no longer a marine <laughs> biologist. I'm no longer a triathlon coach, no longer a personal trainer. I did during quarantine, I started teaching core classes again over Zoom on Saturday oh, wow. afternoons. I was just like, you know, I feel like I, my husband and I started doing like core workouts every day and eventually a friend wanted to join us. I was like, yeah. And then I saw people starting to offer donation only yoga classes and I was like, maybe I should offer donation only core classes. I don't know how many weeks we've been going now, but it is a blast. So apparently That's I awesome. am a group fitness instructor again. So what you're teaching and how you are living are exactly the same in that you do what feels good at that time. Yes. It doesn't mean you have to commit to what you're doing for the rest of your life. And, and, I, and I think it's really important to hit this point strongly that you can do something today or in this season of your life but you don't have to continue it forever. Yeah. Because I think there are so many women, 40s, 50s, I know you don't like age, but that's what we're about here, that have been doing something for a long time and feel that if they stop doing it now, that they've failed. Mm-mm. No, 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 no. So especially if you're a manifesting generator, all of those things you do are, it's, it's like gathering, it's gathering pieces to build your your big puzzle as you mm. go. You're getting all of these nuggets that you're going to need later on down the road. When I was a marine biologist, what being a marine biologist at its heart is being super curious, just asking a ton of questions. What does a professional coach do? Asks a ton of questions. So that was actually part of my training right. to be a coach. I, everyone, I mean, reflectors really are totally different people every single day. And mm. I want to give us all permission to do that. And also permission to think different things every day. We create these these highways in our brain. And it's a habit highway of just like, that's how I think of things. And just because you thought of something in some way one day, like for instance, if it's like an inner critic thought, like I'm not good enough. Mm. Just because you've been thinking I'm not good enough for 30 years, 40 years, it does not mean you need to think that one more day. You can do the work to transform that thought. And it's going to be a bumpy ride. Like you've been riding on this super smooth highway, well paved, and now you're going to take the construction road and it's going to be windy and it's going to be bumpy and there might be some giant potholes and you might have to stop at some really long, weird red lights, but you'll get there. And with practice, you'll start paving that road. That's amazing. That is the perfect way to wrap up all of this because... (laughs) You're absolutely right. The stories we tell ourselves, they don't have to exist anymore. And, you know, you're giving everyone permission today to really understand themselves and move forward in a way that feels really good to them. So thank you, Kelsey. Thank you, Jackie. This has been so fun. You can find Kelsey on all of the social media streams, but I will tell you, since we recorded, she has taken a retirement from social media. So make sure that you subscribe to her podcast and go over to her brand new YouTube channel that I will link to here in the show notes. And I'll also link to her website. So if you want to get your own human design reading, you can go and do that too. You seriously are amazing. I love our connection and this shared passion for thriving over 40. My goodness, I mean, I'm almost 50. It's happening soon. And it's just getting started. And so thank you so much for joining me. Please consider sharing this episode with a friend. You know the one? She could use a little bit of understanding and passion and motivation. And human design might be something that's just right up her alley. So thank you so much. Until next time, take care and keep thriving. Spring has sprung, and with the change of seasons, sometimes comes an increase in vitality. If you're feeling in the mood for a little more personal time, may I suggest Coconut. 
Kokanoo is all about providing clean and natural ingredients when you're enjoying your most intimate moments, with or without a partner. Naturally safe products developed by people who are obsessed with quality. Get 15% off with promo code GROWNASS at grownasswoman.guide forward slash Kokanoo. That's 15% off with promo code GROWNASS at grownasswoman.guide forward slash Kokanoo.